We present our techniques for the application of mini laparoscopy to hollow viscous organs. In this case, we're presenting a Nissen fundoplication performed by the mini laparoscopy. The patient is placed in a standard French position with a leg supported in lithotomy. Our preference has been to enter, as seen in the video, with an optical trocar, which allows for a very small incision and a clean access with direct vision into the peritoneal cavity. Here, the optic view is being utilized to identify the fascial fibers, to gently separate these with a gentle spinning motion to identify the peritoneal cavity seen in the monitor over the surgeon's shoulder. Once the peritoneal cavity has been identified, insufflation has begun, confirmation of peritoneal position is noted, Surgeon will then become positioned comfortably between the legs. Four three millimeter needlescopic trocars are placed at a fairly standard chevron position with a 10 millimeter scope. Now in the supra umbilical position, a three millimeter rod is utilized to elevate the left lobe of the liver. Here the gastrohepatic window is identified with a moderate size hiatal hernia. A three millimeter grasper is being utilized to identify the anatomy and as seen here can readily handle hollow viscous tissue. A three millimeter scope is now being inserted through the upper left subcostal three millimeter trocar. An excellent view can be attained with this despite the small size of the scope. This allows us to proceed with an energy source which in this case is a 10 millimeter ultracision device to be inserted through the single port midline super umbilical trocar. We call this a single trocar technique. In this fashion, one major trocar is being utilized as seen here, and all surrounding trocars are needlescopic or three millimeter in size. Note that a fiber optic uh, scope is not being utilized, but a three millimeter rod lens system is being used that provides excellent viewing, light transmission, as seen here in these tapes. Also note that the retro esophageal view coming into view here now is being provided through a left subcostal trocar site. Excellent, excellent visualization of the cruise of the diaphragm, both right and left sides can be seen, along with excellent retro esophageal visualization. The vagus nerve can be identified being tinted up here along with the esophagus. The section is then turned to the anterior, cruise, anterior peritoneum over the cruise, and then posterior dissection and mobilization is completed such that a penrose drain will be uh, inserted. And again, the vagus can be identified being lifted up with the esophagus. The penrose has been inserted through the supra umbilical 10 millimeter trocar site. It is readily passed through a large retroesophageal window which has been constructed with three millimeter trocars and viewing from the left subcostal port. The penrose is readily advanced and will ultimately be secured with an endo loop. Good visualization of the anatomy is identified still under three millimeter view, identifying both the left and right crews, the esophagus, retroesophageal window, and an excellent view of the thoracic aorta can be provided here as outlined. After securing the penrose with an endo loop, it makes a very good gentle esophageal retractor which allows reduction of the esophagus intra-abdominally and here the large retroesophageal window is identified uh, in position to allow the stomach and fundus to be pulled gently through when the short gastrics have been completely mobilized. A large window is necessary as outlined in numerous other experiences in order to safely bring the fundus through without tension. The short gastrics are being set up in standard fashion by elevating them up towards the intra-abdominal wall. In this case, our preference has been to divide these with the harmonic scalpel. Again, only three millimeter tools are being utilized through the upper abdominal ports, as outlined here, to suspend the short gastrics in the stomach for this process. Short gastrics, fatty omentum, and stomach can all be readily handled with these blunt three millimeter atraumatic graspers. Short gastrics will be divided all the way up to the spleen and the diaphragm. Upon completion of all this dissection, a 2-0 SH suture is being inserted here of silk 
through the single port access in the super umbilical position. The three millimeter instrumentation will be utilized to suture the crews together. Here, an excellent view of the left cruise can be identified. By holding down on the cruise, the area is protected from the suture. The surgeon will suture comfortably from the two upper subcostal trocars. Again, note that the liver is being retracted with a three millimeter rod being held by the assistant's index finger and known here gently holding up on the undersurface of the left lobe of the liver. This was placed through the sub port. Intracorporeal suturing is very important in terms of being able to be expeditious and have good control over the tissue. The surgeon can work very comfortably through these subcostal trocar positions. There is no difficulty in applying the proper tension and suturing with 3 millimeter instrumentation in terms of handling the cruise, the needle, or the sutures. In this case, a two suture repair of the hiatal hernia will be implemented. Extracorporeal knots can be utilized, but our preference has been to avoid CO2 leakage and to maintain the idea of visibility to do knots intracorporeally. Since the short gastrics have been mobilized and a large retroesophageal window constructed, one can see the fundus being brought through with 3 millimeter instrumentation with very little trauma or tension to any of the tissue or structures. They are also strong enough to support and manipulate the pen rows as necessary in order to move the esophagus about. Here, one can see that the fundoplication will come together without tension. This is the time at which the, the bougie is advanced. Our preference is to put in the largest bougie that passes atraumatically. With the bougie, blunt style inserted, the fundoplication is completed. Another suture will be inserted through the simple umbilical port, and satisfactory stitches will be applied to the stomach and then over to the fundus still utilizing three millimeter tools from the subcostal trocars. Appropriate seromuscular bites are taken on all points to avoid tearing of the stomach and or perforation or damage to the gastric wall. The first suture is secured without grabbing the esophagus as this allows the stomach to be gently rockered around the esophagus without tension or sawing through the gastric wall or the esophageal wall. Surgeon knot is readily applied in the stomach because of the previously aforementioned mobilization of the short gastrics and large retroesophageal window comes up around the esophagus and the blunt tipped bougie without tension. And the suture is readily approximated with three millimeter tools without bending, tearing, laceration, or difficulties handling the suture material. The suture being placed is 2O silk. Occasionally, 2O ethabon will be utilized. And the knots will be completed securely, as described, without technical limitations from the performance of the micro instrumentation, in this case, 3 millimeters. At this point, we will place the remaining two sutures. The first remaining suture will be placed cephalad and will take a healthy body of the esophagus, taking care not to damage the esophagus or to incorporate the bougie. Both uh, walls of the plication will be taken. And as we demonstrated, the suture will be tied without difficulties from the, lim the limitations that one might assume be would be present with three millimeter instrumentation. Proper tension can be applied on the suture, securing the fundus and the fundoplication to the esophagus. The final suture is placed inferiorly, and it will grab the gastric wall, esophageal wall, once again, atraumatically, taking care not to uh, violate the esophagus uh, its, or its lumen and the bougie. And the final stitch will go in three-point fashion onto the fundus, securing the fundoplication both superiorly and inferiorly above the primary stitch. This provides for excellent fixation of the fundus uh, around to itself for the fundoplication and also secures it to the esophagus. The bougie has now been removed after gently spinning it and being certain that it has not been incorporated or injured in any way 
through the initial sutures. We do like to placate the fundus to the diaphragm to the right side as they're being demonstrated here. We believe this has added security to uh, preventing its uh, derotation. We like to be certain at the end that the wrap is quite loose and can be seen through as demonstrated there. At this point, we return to the three millimeter scope at which time the pen rows and needles can be removed from the supra umbilical port. With this port in place, an end to close is utilized to readily close this suture in a through and through fashion, providing secure closure through an otherwise very small incision which was made around the optical trocar initially. Secure closure of this port is thereby uh, obtained. Here is a final illustration of how small the needoscopic or three millimeter trochars are. The upper four trochars were all three millimeter. Here again, emphasizing how small they are in comparison with the standard 10 millimeter optical trochar. Time is saved at the end as stereostrips are not, as sutures are not necessary and wounds can be stereostripped shut. Cosmetically, this provides a superior result, noting very little uh, evidence of incision or change within four to five days of the operation when the patients present to the office and have their stereoscripts removed.